to pay for that whole radio campaign, we used Dogecoin. So shout out to crypto for yeah. that. That was an Actually, awesome thing. That- yeah. yeah. So here, if you want to hear one of the best <laughs> stories from an independent band ever, this is this is a great one. <laughs> and we're live. This is live. That's right. Welcome to the Release Day Series podcast. I'm your host, Alex Heward, and I know we miss putting in an episode last week, but trust me when I tell you that this episode is more than going to make up for it. Returning to the show, our electro pop duo Mountainhead, and we're going to talk about their debut EP Backseat that was released on March 18th, 2022. So to tee these guys up, I want to go over a few highlights since releasing their debut single in 2019. So over 2 million streams across all digital streaming platforms. They're independently funded from the very beginning. They've been featured across all of Wu-Tang Clan's social media platforms for their cover of Shimmy Shimmy Ya by Old Dirty Bastard. And their song Let It Out off of this EP peaked at number 28 on the Billboard Canada alternative charts. So broadcasting from the traditional territory of the First Peoples of the Williams Treaties First Nations, the Mississaugas of Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, Inuit, and Métis peoples, this is my conversation with the Brothers Mountainhead. Ben, Kyle, what's up, boys? What up, Alex? Yo. Man? Good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Good to be back. We're sitting a little closer to the screen this time. Yeah. You you are. Yeah. No green screen. We had you on uh, the initial season, uh, and I can't thank you guys enough for like taking the jump when we first started this podcast to, to chat with me. It was it's It's just been awesome to see you guys over the last two years now, I guess. Just keep it up. Oh yeah, yeah. man. And uh, I love the idea. Like I loved it then and I love it now the uh, release series. And, uh, it's interesting to hear all what everybody's up to again. We're just kind of, basically we're entertaining ourselves. So that's what, what our marketing plan is first and foremost. (laughs) But it's good to see what other people are up to too, man. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. No, and you should. You know, you should. It's sort of like, you know, just take some some tips and tricks, right? And that's exactly. that's kind of what it's about. And yeah. I can't help but think like and I'll tell you, I've got a, a couple friends who are uh, a folk duo who have come to me and they're like, Hey guys, uh well, hey guys, hey Alex. Um <laughs> we would love to do with you what Mountainhead are doing with David Peyote. So I'm now working with them just oh, like sick. taking out ideas of like you know, of their two songs that are coming up. And I'm like, all right, let me work on some ideas here. So I'm throwing, we've created a right. Google Drive, we're throwing things in and uh, just kind of creating ideas around what their two new singles are going to be. And that's all thanks to to your episode and what you Whoa, guys do with, with Peyote. Hey, cool. I'm glad that could be inspiring, man. I'm glad you're doing that. That's effing awesome. So 2019, you guys released um, We Stole Your Head and, uh, you know, obviously more behind there. Mm-hmm. I, I can't believe that backseat is your debut ep after everything that you guys holy cow man just yeah. kidding i mean I, I suppose it really is only an ep for the folks consuming out there because like i think i said it on the last time is like all those singles for the most part like especially we still your head to to say no more era there is like a record to us because we recorded it like a record all we like just, the same time yeah we just released it as a single but and even more so with this EP, like we were kind of doing the single thing. And then uh, with the pandemic, we just got so far ahead with what we were working on that we we wanted to release, you know, a good chunk of songs instead of, you know, we're going to go back to some single releasing for sure. But we wanted to get something out there that was a little more people could sit down and spend a little, a little bit of time with. And we yeah. record most of these all at the same time too. Just, so, yeah. and it was like during the pandemic again, like we what, what couldn't tour. So like, we're in the studio recording. And then these kind of, these series of songs came kind of like of us being shoved inside literally. So it's like, okay, again, like shoved into ourselves. It's like, all right, what do we got Yeah, here? Yeah. You're not allowed to go on vacation outdoors anymore. So time you gotta to go, go inside. In. <laughs> yeah. Time to Can- go in. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of wild resorts in there too, I must say. They're all free, <laughs> but access to them is uh well, you're going to have to figure it out on your own. Yeah, I believe it. Well, just tune into your social media as well. I mean, you can see it all <laughs> unfolding there, uh the letter yes. music video. All a result of two guys being shoved inside and like, well, yeah. what are we going to do? Oh, throw ideas at the wall, I suppose. And and you know, Shade, you're the first track on this album. I'd love to kind of just go through because I think what you guys have done yeah. with the EP, I mean, to 
obviously there's stories behind everything, but I think I, what I love is that the visuals that support what you guys put out really demonstrate that there is a story. So Shade came out over a, a year ago now. That was yeah, like, no kidding, what, man. March 12th, I think. Of, uh, yep, of I think that is it. Yeah, exactly. So it, holy shit. What, we, we were in Miami and uh, the Sinbad Hotel. Hilarious name. Which, or, or maybe it was Sinbad Motel, I should say. Yeah, it wasn't a hotel. was at the end, just the end of our street. And we were staying in Little Haiti. And uh, we were told quite a few times by different locals, like, why the hell are you staying in this part of town? You shouldn't be here. I don't right? know. This place got a pool. It's sick. Yeah, there's a pool and there's a <laughs> gate, whatever, man. But yeah, uh, yeah so Shade kind of came about when we were in Miami. And that was just after the, uh, the um, Wu-Tang thing had happened. Mm. Um, so we were at like some club and, uh, some girls came up to us. They had like a Wu-Tang cup and they're like, we saw you on Wu-Tang. Today. Really? That was what? a while back. That was, yeah. was that, that would have been, yeah. What? 2018, yeah. 2019, exactly. or something? 2019, 2019. Yeah. So, right, right. It, and it was like, at, this just, is the origin of the song. Yeah. Just at, hadn't... at some point we were popping around and one of us was going, uh, 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 a banger, uh, Ben. It's a banger. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, it's a simple, right? We'll so, we, could, we could do something with that. And uh, so the, that idea kind of stuck around. You know, you did the classic voice note thing. <laughs> and uh, when we came back. We'd also taken the pictures there, too. Yeah, we took all those mm. pictures in front, in front of the Sinbad, of the Sinbad. Motel. Not, yeah. not relating it to shade at all, right? At that point, it was just, ha there's some pictures. And yeah, it looked cool. And David Peyote was actually the one that informed us that that was the hotel that automatic for the people the rem album had also taken a picture in front of it yeah oh. and it, i was like well that's strange i had no idea man yeah their album cover there's this like big sign and it's from the same motel because i guess there was some famous recording studio yeah they were staying there or some shit yeah oh, unreal. we had no idea about that yeah um but yeah that song just kind of came about out of excitement really and um we which is what it's about too right in like the whole series it's like this the first time you get the idea and you're motivated and you're going out in the street and you're you're going to conquer the world right like that's kind of like the feel of shade it's kind of like shade is like we peel up in front rip open the door and say get in yeah <laughs> exactly and you don't know where we're going but we're going yeah totally and then and then that is followed up by backseat which was the latest single and uh, yeah to, to come out uh for for the track and i think this is i mean you guys are pretty poppy but i think this was like one of the most sort of like pop heavy riffs Definitely. and like and, sure. and sounds that you were you were going for uh on the album where where were you guys at when this kind of came in because i i also love i'll stop my question i'm like jason bateman you guys listen to smartless <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have I have a couple of times. Sure. Okay, Bateman's, Bateman's questions just go on and on. So sometimes I do that. But, um, you know, just part of like showing us stuff on your social media, which is sick because it's like, hey, what do you think? Should we turn this into a song? It's like, actually, exactly. it's already a song. So, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's it's an awesome it's an awesome song. Backseat. Yeah, it's definitely our most poppy ambition yet. And it was kind of like uh, we had Datsun come in to drum for us who is very wildly popular on twitch you got to check him out he's amazing hip-hop drummer mm -hmm. with the pads but he was in and our producer darcy yates was kind of just like what do, what do you dudes think about a soca beat in even though they're not in the final cut here in trap hi-hats so we had we uh, initially had trap hi-hats in that song and then peyote decided that it wasn't fitting very well so they're out but it was kind of like <laughs> darcy just kind of throwing that together and we had the song idea already and uh and he loved it and we loved it it was just like our, we we showed it to our parents and they're like is this justin bieber so yep. that was their stance on it <laughs> it was oh. like oh did we go too far yeah. I, I mean yeah i mean like the the thing we've said it since day one is like let's try to make some club bangers with a fender p bass and a les paul and yeah. i mean that's the thing is like you know I, i'm interested to see how people like the people that are like big fans of like our circuit sound, like the fuzz sound, how they accept something like this. Yeah, it's all it, done with the same instruments. It's I all mean. done with the same instruments, all the leads that sound like synths or guitars. But like the thing was, was like once the Soka beat or the Calypso beat went in there, it kind of just like, it really just shoves things into that like dancey summer poppy vibe. Mm -hmm. And we've always been like, I mean, especially for me through Mountainhead as a project as a whole is like trying to find my self-embarrassment line where i think i i can't do this or i shouldn't do this because it's not cool where you're like you do something and you're like looking around to see if anyone's looking but that person looking is you stay yeah. tuned for our third single it's all polka music yeah, yeah. uh so 
you know, it, it is it is a poppy track, but uh, the I, message is still there. The feeling is still there. Yeah, like the feel the feel of the song was too good not to to do it. And you know, it kind of just started with that intro riff that you hear. That was kind of the initial idea with the song, and then how it formed together after that was kind of like building blocks coming together. But it was a pretty easy write. So again, mm. whenever that's happening for us, yeah. we're going to pursue it. It's smooth. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it, it, it's it's all mountain head, guys. Like, you know, and, and I don't know, like, you know, not to say that you don't want to stray to try, like, try and find something new, but, you know, you guys have your sound and it's, I, I believe you called it what, hypno, hypnagogic pop? Is that what? Yeah, that was a uh, shout out to Joey for that one. Uh, yeah, like, we're unsure what that is. People yet, but... are writing this about us and we're like, that sounds cool. Uh, that's <laughs> the one. I, I mean, when I first heard you in 2019, I'm like, this is the best hypnagogic pop duo that I think I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Someone who gets it. Uh, yeah. Yes. You know, uh, no, I, I mean, it, it's awesome because, and then that, that bleeds into let it out, which is just an absolute great tune. Now I, I'm kind of curious is like, when did you guys write backseat? Was that after let it out? Did you guys kind of get into that afterwards? I guess where I'm going with this is because let it out, which is crazy was your first, what radio or second, second radio. I first, guess Shave first was time on going to radio. First time Shave going to radio. was on the but, verge, but we didn't like do no, a radio like campaign. Featured. We the used verge. the, uh, independent artists listening. We use the submit thing on the verges website. So if you go on the verge, you ever think it would work, it does. Submit, submit music. You can submit music, and I believe Siobhan, Siobhan checks that out. And shout out to Siobhan, yeah, for, shout out to Siobhan and, and Sarah, Sarah Burke, Burke. and nice. and Jeff Leak um, for everyone yeah. over at XM. But yeah, so let it out. Let it out was written first for sure because I would say like the other chunk of songs were all written together. Let it out and dedicated were written at different times. Let it right. out was perhaps maybe even the first song we ever wrote as Mountainhead. Just, um, okay. just screwing around just screwing around like it was back when we were in in another band and while we were waiting for the drummer to show up i was playing drums and kyle's playing bass do we have the lyrics we just had like the beat it really. was like you you had the bass line and you were doing the bass line and i was doing that like stupid uh tom sound floor like oscar tom. the grouch on the drums but and i shit. yeah but i remember we got to a point and we were going oh, 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 come yeah. on and let me and nice. we're like okay that could, that's yeah. a banger and we just Crazy. we so it, it was around for the first sessions with Circuit and We Stole Your Head. And but we all just stuff. left it, go to the wayside, we were just like, we, oh, whatever. And we also, yeah. like, just because we couldn't, we we hadn't figured out how to make it sound like a Mountain Head song yet because it was still kind of like, yeah, it was still uh, an outlier. Or, or if I'm going to be topical, it was on the fringe. Yeah, um, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, hey, we're not getting uh, into that, all right? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> it, so it was just a song kind of circuit, like orbiting the outer circle. And it was the second time around that I think we we brought it up, and Darcy's like, "Oh, dude, this drum beat should work perfectly." And then it did, and it just all kind of there it together. Was. That's and wild. if you if you look at the video, there's some celebrities in there. Uh, you might recognize <laughs> one of them, the uh, host of the Release yeah. Day podcast. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was awesome. Doing that, dude. Thanks, thanks for doing that, dude. Hundred percent. No, I I loved um, because I think yeah, let it out. I remember. I think I call me out on this. Obviously. You guys played that live. You guys would play Let It Out live. Because I yes. remember yep. being in the audience doing the, the whoo, whoo. You know, I'm not going to do it anymore. Yep. But I'm going to, you know, I remember being in the audience for that stuff. And I was like, where is this song? How do I how do I get my hands on this song? And it's great because it, it is totally like an audience song. And you guys took that not only with sock puppets to another level, but <laughs> you know, it it was so cool that you could that you did. You reached out to your fans and you guys had some great clips in that some guy yeah. flying a helicopter, you know, I know. up in the Yukon. But yeah, it was wild. Like un unbelievable. It's it was just so cool to uh, to see all that come together. Um yeah, yeah, I was I was in there uh, briefly and uh, big time. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, and then yeah, you did get the sock puppets. Like yeah, <laughs> this was obviously something you guys were like, hey, let's let, you know we got to come up with with some other kind of I idea here. You were gonna start exactly. pretty low, but pretty low budget on the sock. Exactly, two hundred bucks. I think it cost us the whole video. It's amazing, amazing track. And again, like first time on radio, uh, charting. It's you know, congratulations on that, guys. I mean, I know Thanks, you know man. it's yeah. not it's not the be all and end all, but I mean, come on, like you say, you're doing everything independently. It's it's exactly. gotta be great. What was what did it look like for for that rollout? Did you have PR to help get to radio tracking or hire a radio tracker? 
Well, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we had uh, David Tazowski from Cam- shout out to Tizo. He's Cam- awesome. Canvas Media, a- absolutely great at what he does, and uh, just like you know, through through the trials and tribulations of uh, independence as an artist, it, you you're gonna hire some people that that probably don't do much, and you're gonna hire some people that do a lot. And uh, Tazowski is one of those that does a lot but says little, which is important. And something to, it's something hard to, look to find for people like that. When you're scanning for people to hire, if they're promising you a lot, Bail. hang up the phone. He kept our expectations low, and our expectations were low. We know, understand that coming to radio we expecting anything for, the, for the first time is a, is a tough battle, no matter who you are. And, you know, the whole thing is about building trust. And, uh, you know, we were – we were expecting to maybe get a couple plays, but to, to be charting in, in the top 30 and on the top 40 for 15 weeks and literally being the only independent band on the charts that entire time was great and yeah. cool and a good learning experience and like a great spot to, uh, you know, get further recognition in your career. That kind of really solidified things with agents. Right. And, all of a sudden people things, are coming to us. It, like stuff that was like, again, looming around and we had talked to people, but like once we hit the charts it really i guess notifies that you're yeah. able to to break through that gate and it is a tough gate to get through people trust you all of a sudden more super appreciative of how how it all rolled out and uh yeah let it out again is definitely not my favorite song by us but it was it, it is a, it's a great track and like you said how it was being received live was when we decided to record it Mm. Yeah, can't and put the microphones in people's faces anymore. That's illegal, right? Well, we'll bring Lysol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, perfect, perfect. You guys, you guys prepared? Yeah. It's It was a simple track and an easy track, I think, to introduce who we were because some of our stuff, it's not abrasive, but it's it's going to make you like maybe go, what? For we don't usually go for like pure the pure content, happy, joy thing. We're usually trying to mix in like the dark side of the human experience as well because that's just as important as the light side. And also... To pay for that whole radio campaign, we used Dogecoin. So shout out to Crypto for yeah. that. That was an awesome Actually, thing. That, yeah. yeah. So if you want to hear one of the best <laughs> stories from an independent band ever, this is this is a great one. We this started back in when 2013 or 2014 20, when Doge 2014, was nowhere to be seen. Uh, because we on. got into crypto really early, um, like 10 years ago. And wow, in 2014 we found out about dogecoin and uh had a lol ha look at this little dog thing it's the meme lol our old (laughs) studio partner at the time uh was into it and we were like pretty heavy in the dogecoin community on reddit uh and and even so like i've i forgot about a lot of the stuff we did but back in the day on dogecoin's reddit you could tip each other in doge Hmm. and it was like so you could just it was like a fun way to use the currency to to move move around right like that's how it gets popular and we we designed this thing called quest bot and it was essentially you would send someone on a quest and when they fulfilled the quest, you would tip them in Doge. And one of the things we tried to do in 2014, which is hilarious because he does it now, was we wanted someone to design a Snoop Doge logo. So we could try to get a hold of Snoop <laughs> like, about Doge. Snoop here? It's funny now because back then it was like, oh, no one had heard of it and people are still discovering about crypto. But you know, I was like, damn, we got to bring QuestBot back. Like That was a sick idea. It was just way before its time. So we, we needed some money to hire some people for Let It Out. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin and those other things, they're just, it's not, it's not worth it to, to be messing around with the, the big dogs. So we remembered, oh, we have a bunch of Dogecoin that we mined. So we like go on our computer and we find the program and it hasn't been updated since 2015. And, uh, we're like, okay, this is all right. We'll, we'll take a week. And in that week, no other than Elon Musk decided to start pumping Doge. Coin. Right. He's like, what this shit? What the fuck's this going stuff on? That no yeah, Doge is borking. And yeah, the Doge really started to bork. And uh, I mean, for us, I mean, there's like a lot of opinions on crypto, but like we mined this shit. So it costs us fucking nothing. Cost like, us electricity nothing. Electricity costs. Yeah. And uh, it just by happenstance, it popped off at the right time. That's so we insane. just Wild. had to chip out a little exactly. little bit of it and bring it into physical currency, which took about 30 minutes, folks, for anyone who okay. says, yeah. yeah, but you can't get your money out. It took 30 minutes to get the money in the yeah. account. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so then we hired David Tazowski. We got Otour on board again. All our ads. And yeah. so everything was because of the Doge. Like, yeah. thank, shout out to Dogecoin. Fuck, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, that, no, that that is amazing, and and you know what? Also, like the benefits of releasing like singles, like you guys do, right? Because yeah. you put yeah. that kind of you know 
that money, you put that backing behind, you know, the individual exactly. songs. And again, like that's, it's no secret, right? I mean, it's the, it's the singles game. It's the singles world, but you know, exactly, again, I think yeah. it's just, again, proof in the pudding of, of why, you know, it, it's kind of going that way for and sure. why for you as an artist, it can really, you know, it be incredibly successful for you. Uh, you got to have the song first, which, you know, we're, we're move on here. we spent a lot, a lot of time on let it out, but, but rightfully <laughs> so. Um, but it, you know, was there anybody or were you guys that decided that you wanted to push this to radio or do you push all songs to, you know, no, no radio? We, yeah. we, we specifically yeah. picked this silver you knew bullet. This one. Yes. N- knowing that not knowing, but like having the inkling again from the live shows, Right. Uh, our manager too was like, out of all the songs, everyone was really ties. All same thing. It's like yeah. this. Everyone nailing like this one, this one, this one, this one. Cause, okay. Because we were heavy on backseat, and Darcy's like backseat's the one. And most people that hear backseat are like, "This is a banger." But right. it's like, um, is it rock? It's like dancing and pop and rock. So yeah. now it's like a little bit of a. It's a little confusing for the programming. Big in the club scene. It'll be big. You know, I'm sure. Like, you know, I don't think you want to get everything into remixes now, but you can really hear that one. You know, yeah, yeah, and so. I mean, again, that's what we're we're into, like kind of disrupting what rock and roll is, and yeah. allowing life is allowing in allowing all like we want to network with all music, not like rock and rock and metal and metal. It's like let's get all of this shit dancing together, and mm-hmm. a, yeah. a lot of it is starting to happen more and more like this with genres collapsing. But all that means is that the artists can be more creative and stop boxing themselves in, and also like and having everybody participate like say we just upload our stems and be like whoever wants to mix this mix yeah, it, it and we'll grab the best one we think and then give you credit and give you money for it for it like or whatever it is right like it's like yeah. now we're all participating in this big huge electric village here called the internet and yeah. technology building your own community i think is how how things are going to go in the future self-fulfilling like a self-circle between you and your fan base it sounds it it is it it it's, I think it's a hundred percent true. It sounds like a lot of work, and that's because it exactly. is right. Yeah, it's it exactly. it, it it is like you got it. That's why you got to be so like into it. You got to be dedicated, you to. right? You, gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, that's you got exactly. like, yeah, you got you 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 have to be because it's just like that's all that's all part of it. You got to kind of be looking a few things ahead. Like maybe your song does blow up on TikTok. You know, it always comes back to things that I say to people that I talk to. Is like, are you ready? Post blow up, good. You got a million. You got two million views on TikTok. What are you, are you ready for anything after that? Right. Do you have anything further for people to find? And then you know what? How are you going to spin that kind of going forward? And and that mentality of you know, put it out there for your, your, your listeners, for your fans to be, be a part of. I think there's a, a lot of examples of that happening now and it, but it's, it's just not easy or, you know, just things that happen. Exactly. You know? That's uh, it. And I, I think that though, that's the whole thing about life too, is like you really just got to find, and it doesn't matter what path it is, but find something and dedicate it to. Yeah. Like that's where all this mental nonsense is coming from is like, you got to find something to point your head at yeah. or it's going to rebound on you and cause a mess. Yeah. yeah. You don't aim the bow up into the sky and just let it go. Right. And, yep. and with, and with whatever erroneous goal it is, you pick a target, you aim at it and you shoot your shot. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think mine gets squirrely when it's not doing that. <laughs> obviously TikTok is cool. We've been having a lot of fun on TikTok, but, uh, it seems like the aim of everyone now is virility. And like the thing with that is like, if you go viral for something that you don't want to do, guess what? Right. Those people don't want what you want to do. They, they don't want, want more. Shit. They want that the same of the thing. And like, again, the Wu Tang thing was a very small blip of virility, and I would say we probably got like out of maybe three, four hundred thousand hits, five hundred, six hundred subs and follows, and out of that, which is good, but it, yeah, it's good. But like 10, 15, 20 people that were solid Mount Head fans after that. So the funnel is huge. It starts and then it goes do, do, do. And that's fine. But it's like everything I'm seeing here from all the labels, from a lot of artists is just like do covers until someone reposts the shit out of it. And like <laughs> that's that's everyone's game plan right now. And that's fine. I'm not knocking it. You know, we do our little vocal cover things just for shits. But like, like you're saying, you got to be prepared for like what's the actual goal? Is yeah. the goal to be viral so you can fuck off? Like because if, if your goal isn't to make songs or make rad art or make, rad anything that you're doing 
then everything else is going to be corrupted. Yeah. Because you're you're aiming your arrow at something fucked up. Yeah. Like, Give me the money and I want to sit on the couch the rest of my life. It's like that ain't going to work too good for you, man. No. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's interesting you say that. You know, uh, whoever you know, uh, industry people saying like you know do covers and wait and see who who can pick it up. You know, it's like. It it is interesting to still hear that because I mean it's not like it's uh, a new thought. Like I, I I go back and I think about right. Van Halen and and like I think right. their first single was "You Really Got Me" by The Kinks, yeah. right? Which is obviously uh-huh. a, a, a cover. And then, but they were just like stock full of original music, and you know uh, had a huge fan base yeah. just from the live shows that they would do. But they were ready for it and i know we're going way back exactly. i know we're way back with van halen no, but still, no, it's okay still, that's relevant right that's exactly even it. back yeah. then yeah 100 percent, man and it's exactly what you're saying is like make sure you have something in the backpack because like mm-hmm. if even if we dropped you know backseat tomorrow and it goes crazy if we don't have something to follow it up in six weeks or eight weeks what you got it like the momentum has to keep going and this is something Build we've learned snowball. many times where we've we've let things die down and to start the machine up again is not fun. So like yeah. to keep, keep the snowball rolling and keep pressure on is, is super important. And exactly what you're saying, like you need to be prepared. If just regardless, be prepared, make sure you're at least three songs, five songs ahead of your release schedule. Yeah. Cause if you get caught, if you get caught in a scramble, you're going to be stressed out to make the right decisions. And you also, Will, will not be prepared. So yeah. Yeah. that happened to us in the shimmy a bit too, where people were giving us shit for being like, well, why didn't you just really like all this stuff? And it was yeah. like, oh, we didn't know. Yeah, you know? We, and it's it, like, oh shit. We didn't plan for that to happen. No. And yeah, no. like, I remember the guy doing playlisting for us at the time was like, well, why didn't you have it ready as a single? It's like, if we had it ready as a single, likely this wouldn't have happened. Cause if it's like, all right, we're doing this thing to make it viral. So the Wu Tang reposted it. It's like, there's no way it's going to happen. Also, Wu Tang could have hated it. They could have done exactly. like, yeah. like, and now we're in real yeah. shit if they exactly. we get negative energy from the woo. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Or or no energy, I guess, too, right? It's like, well, there's oh, yeah. you know, if it's it, either way, it, you know, obviously it's hindsight. It's like, well, why didn't you put it up first? Well, sure, yeah. but it doesn't mean this would have happened or could have happened. Exactly. Jeez, so, I really should have taken a picture of that lightning striking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> right? Why did you get it? Yeah, twice. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, dedicated and Jess, I don't want to glaze over them, but they, they kind of come in. I think they're coming in as part of the full release of the album. Yep. Yep. Jess is, uh, one of my favorite on the EP, uh, because I, I just like the, uh, the contrast, like mm-hmm. the, the verse is pretty dark and kind of creepy. And the, uh, the chorus to me is like a breath of fresh air. Um, or it's a little more like it kind of releases, even though you. we say you can't breathe. Yeah. But so it, it's, it, uh, it kind of releases you from the tension of the verse. And uh, I don't really know where Jess came from. I cool think... beat laid down by uh, Dats in there. We could, like that changed a lot too because we we had like some situations and demo drums. But then when he came in, it was like we were rewriting the songs all over again. So that was kind of it was cool and frustrating at the same time. You're like, oh, I thought this was done, but it's not. We got to <laughs> yeah. do the whole thing. But then it came out way better. It did come out way better. And like, because I, I remember, I think like the, your bass line was pretty much intact at, at one point, or there was a bass line that weird, started weird. it. But I didn't have any guitar shit in there, and uh, yeah, as soon as Datsun laid down that beat, I think he hit that snare at one point. We're like, that, that one. <laughs> yeah, the snare sounds sick. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a deep cut. Pretty into drum sounds. You know, yeah. exactly. It's, it's a deep, deep cut, cut, right? When you yeah. start thinking about it again, you yeah. know, we we still don't have a Mountainhead album, and we we don't have we don't have to get into that, guys. That's fine. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> we'll make one. We'll let sure. you know when we think about it. We uh, we do have a music video. For oh yeah, Jess we do too. for Jess. We it was, were in the fucking snow. It was arduous for days to shoot and yeah. freezing our asses off. And the director, Peepaw Noble, who was, shout out to Cam, who was fucking fully geared up in full, mitts, full, yeah, toques, like, get in there uh, with three jackets. bare hands and just sit in there for minutes on end. I was like, I can't feel the three days. Can't feel this oh, hand. Good. Thanks a lot. Most people ask us about how it is performing in the summer in this shit, but it's like when it was minus fifteen and we were getting asked to like we were we shot in this abandoned uh, deer hunting camp, mm. so like we were just in the middle of the fucking woods and. <laughs> Again, the denim, the denim will do a little bit, but Outfits not much. Are great for spring and fall. And he's like, let's, let's go here. do the, uh, let's go do some uh, shots on the snowmobiles and like, right, great. It's minus fifteen. Now we're going 
We were going slow on the snowmobiles, it's but like the wind dumb and made... dumber when they get into Aspen. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we're in the Rocky. <laughs> you got any spare gloves? <laughs> you go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> redeem yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just a little bit in behind the, the the release. Now we've talked about the music and, and a bunch of other things for 35 minutes, and I, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, I, I'd love to. We could, we could talk all day. Um for sure, but uh, you guys got a really cool eight-bit graphic to go with the uh, the as the album cover for this. This peyote just kind of going going a little crazy with his thoughts on the album artwork. <laughs> this actually, this was not peyote on this. Okay, one. no, it was uh, it was this other dude, Jessamine. Uh, funny enough, who we found on Fiverr. So yeah, if you want, Fiverr, if you dude. want any sick like. Uh, because we were, we just really wanted the uh, yeah like the eight bit sixteen bit play too the much Stardew Valley I think maybe yeah that's it. okay um, yeah I mean we just we wanted to go with the uh, the pixelated like old video game style the eight bit and, and we didn't want to burden Peyote <laughs> with the the task of having to figure that out yeah one square he's a busy fella. one square one exactly <laughs> that's how I do it I, I don't know yeah. how else yeah. to do it and initially it was just the like going to be the single art for backseat when we were going to drop backseat as a single but then once we decided to have an ep we were kind of like this is a great cover mm -hmm. uh for the whole thing yeah. and it's kind of like if you want to get into the metaphor it's, yeah we it's can kind go of deep like, in here like again where we're saying this whole ep is a break off from from the system or the norm or or the the bloated whale whatever you want to call it and it's like the the cover is kind of like how we're seen to live where nature and everything is infinite but you get told it's this compressed 16-bit universe with very little data mm -hmm. when absolutely it isn't it's this infinite mm -hmm. beautiful thing but we get you know if you look at what's happening in the news and social media everyone's so hyper fixated on this thing that, just like, compresses the world into one story right it's and, just like and infin infinity into a grain of sand it's, and then everyone's like attached to that grain of sand oh, yeah. not looking up at infinity oh, yeah. yeah and th calling cu saying well oh, everything's shit the world's shit it's like no just that one little your thing compression algorithm that you're running is showing you a shit rendering of, of reality right. right and it's you know yeah as much as as much as as there's things going on like right now i'm sitting with my brother i'm talking with alex like oh, if you no. turn off your fucking phone and your fucking tv and you 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 don't get caught on the reddit and youtube posts like life's beautiful be here now with to it. totally yeah. agree and and you know like and i'm i'm you know i mean we all are but like i, I totally get caught in all those thoughts as well and i kind of have this, oh, same, this moment dude. of like of you know, with what's going on, and and look, it's been going on for a long time. But you know, I've, we'll just we'll just here's the elephant room, right? You've got the war. You've got you know that's everything's going on. I, when that started happening, I was like, I kind of want to put the podcast on hold. Like, I don't really feel motivated to do this because, like, why? Sh like, why should I have the freedom to do this? You know, when when oh, I, I know, right, but then, exactly. I, I mean, that's that's been a daily. That's been every day for so many people, right? I mean, and like you say, it's like we've just honed in on these things now i mean it's pretty big it's hard not to miss but so much of that has been happening elsewhere that we've just kind of are so used to it that we don't even think about it and to bring this back to, to music you know i think that artists as, as well there, there's a lot even when i'm the, in the podcast world like you're looking at so much happening and like what are you doing outside of the real world to keep up just with what you're trying to do. It comes back to the dedication, the love that you have for what you want to do and having a tra trajectory and a target. But I mean, when you're on social media and you're looking at all this stuff, uh, you're looking at the incredible videos you guys do and the great interaction you guys have, you know, I feel like, you know, as an artist as well, you're like, oh man, like I, I, what can I do to keep up here? Again, it's, well, yeah. we'll keep saying it. If, if you look inside, you'll find a better place to dwell. Like. Hundred percent. Don't <laughs> create your own system or steal you get your own wrapped head. up into the horse shit. Like this is we. This is what's been going on. Is what we stole your head has been about the whole time. Right. You know, is about you freely giving away your reality to anyone, anyone and anybody except yourself. And yourself is the one you should give it to, so you can program the computer to inhabit a better reality. And like I'm sure. Again, there's a million ways you can take all this. There's a lot of people going through a bunch of shit. But again, if you can be here now, this will override your habits, your programs, the news, social media, and big advertisement. Like, again, 
Everyone's trying to take the head and just stomp all over it. So you guys have all been having some fun. You guys are trying to break into the podcast world. Uh, not trying. You kind of have. You kind of have with your little yeah. fun YouTube thing. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. I, mean, I love it. It's appreciate that. I appreciate that you picked up that comment about the high thing because, like, yeah. I know that's something everybody experiences, but no one really talks about it. You know? yeah. yeah, we missed recording that. What I said was like the, the comment was Ben mentioned is like comment below if you've ever gotten high and picked out bad acting. And I'm like, like, yeah, like every <laughs> single time we like everything is ruined yeah. when you when you do that. Yeah, exactly, man. I can't believe yeah. it. See, like, I knew it. I the, the fact that you see in it too. It's just like. There's something like we're we're skipping over something in the sober life here that exactly. it's like that is being picked up when high. I mean, like, yeah, that's friends, not acceptable that cut. Let's get stoned and go see the new Batman. No, no don't, don't do it. Do it. Do not I will do go it. there and eat popcorn, stone sober, and watch the new <laughs> exactly. Batman. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, the podcast. I mean, we just kind of made a, a content schedule, right? Just to do it, you know, and not we really keep ourselves in check with it. Again, yeah. first of all, that's... yeah, and not really caring about what the content is. You know, we've had fun. You know, making the like tomorrow we do, we'll release another one of those like 30 second songs, like just making shit up and just having fun and like just like honing skills. We didn't want to hone. I didn't want to learn how to use TikTok or any of this shit, but it's it's fun once you embrace it. And uh, and then the, we're doing the content for it. So like doing the content is always fun because it's yeah. always creative, right? It's exactly. always kind of at the spur of the moment. So that's like that's the thrill of everything. I think. And that's yeah, you kind of get again, you kind of get in your head too, right? You're thinking about like, oh, I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, right. and I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, right? right. And and I, and I agree because when I think about like me trying to do the TikTok thing for for just for any kind of relevancy, um, or even Instagram Reels, yeah. I'm like, oh man, like I don't, yeah. I gotta do this, and then I gotta do that, and like and like I'm a yeah. video guy, like I I video edit, and like that's that's my life, that's what I do, but I'm like, oh, but I gotta do that, yeah. and the, but I think you know what yeah. I've seen with you guys and exactly those those thirty second songs or where it's like oh you you know let's go make some some food and you guys record some chopping and it's like once you do it a couple yeah. times kind of work yeah ass. exactly right you know once you're gonna do that a couple times you go like okay actually it's not so bad i know that for our next one in it's, the yeah, bathroom I, uh, we're just gonna flush the toilet and drop the the lid and the work really comes in you guys making music out of it yeah That's exactly, exactly it man and you, as you go along in the process you start learning yeah. about it and then you start going oh it starts revealing new paths like oh what if we try it like this and it's like oh this is cool if you do that edit it's like it all evolves in itself and you, you get more and more involved involved in it but the first step is the most important yeah because you don't know and like so that unknown it's yeah. like it's funny the thing i like is because again we just decided like six seven days a week let's drop content and usually we'll, you know, we try to get the, the lion's share done in one day. So we're not spending it all days not making music anymore. We're making toilet sounds. <laughs> but, uh, um, it, it's been cool to watch it evolve. Like I, I watched our first in session and it's just like a pile of shit uh, with us just jamming nonsense. And then by the next week we had it dialed in it's where just, you're. By doing it, right? Like yeah. going like, oh, this, is, this isn't working. This isn't working. But you have to do it and go out there and present it and be like, oh, this kind of sucks. But it's like. Go and embarrass the shit out of yourself, and then nothing is going to hold you back. You yeah, know? Exactly. it's been a mentality you guys have had for like the beginning too, right? It's like we're going to go out here and we're exactly. going to try. You know, we're just we're at least going to try and, exactly. and give it a shot and um, test the waters. I think is what uh, what you guys said. Exactly, test the waters man. Like like, like I said, with let it out and dedicated too. Like we we played those in front of people, and like we played them by like we just tried this yesterday, and if this goes like shit, well, yeah. oh well. Like you just go out and play in front of people and it might go terrible, but you're walking yeah. the tightrope. That's the fun of it. The one thing, and, I, and I'll, I'll wrap it up with this because I think it's it's kind of a foundation. I think that it, it makes sense is that there is something for every artist that they can discover that will work for them. You know, you can you can 100%. watch all of Mountainhead's videos and be like, well, how am I supposed to? Well, don't. Take it as an idea. Take it as an inspiration. Look at somebody else exactly. and, and think about, oh, okay, that's what they're doing. They're doing it because they enjoy it. I've seen other artists, Nicole Haber and Peach Luffy, just to name a couple, that are out there doing things that I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable doing, but they've got the personality and the ability, the want, and they've actually kind of got themselves into a nice kind of snug rhythm doing these things that, that are something they love to do. And you don't have to copy them, but maybe there is no. something like if this is what you want to be doing, if you want to be recognized, if you want to try and make noise, you do have to find a way to make noise, to try and get out there. If you just want to play music, if you just want to play it on your computer, you know, around a campfire, anything like that, easy, no problem, 
right? Yep. But but if yep. you want it, if you want to go out and get it, you want to get radio, you want to get recognition, there is something that you have to offer that people are going to be interested in, mainly because it's you and genuine to you, just like your music. Exactly. Just like your music. Boys, Backseat is the the new EP. Uh, a pleasure, as always, to chat with you. I can't wait to uh, see you guys at a live show again soon. You guys playing live anytime soon? Yes. yes, sir. We got uh, just your favorite spot, the Horseshoe, yeah, the shoe. on uh, uh, Friday, Friday the 13th in Nice. Um, we're going to be in Los Angeles mm. in June. Amazing. And Burnstown is on the neat cafes on the books again. Yeah. And then there's a couple other things just looming right now, though. Toronto, LA, Amazing. Burnstown. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, you can drive to, yeah, it's a bit, yeah, that's, that's wicked. Uh, great, great tour schedule, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's what you call optimal. Yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> optimal economic, however you want to put it. Well, boys, uh, best of luck promoting, yes. uh, the album it, again, fantastic. Appreciate and it, uh, thank much. you for joining me on the release day series podcast. Fucking right, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. You can discover more podcast episodes as well as our limited video series on our website, www.releasedayseries.com. And if you'd like to support the show, we've added that option to the website as well. Send us a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, whatever you'd like. Any support helps. But most importantly, we appreciate you listening and sharing the podcast. Mm-hmm.